Welcome back to another episode of Collider Jedi Council. I'm Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff, a.k.a. Harloff Minor, whatever you want to call me. That's fine. We're all friends here. Right next to me, it's the Grand Moff Nemiroff herself, hi, Perry hi. Nemiroff. I am so happy to be here and show off yet another Star Wars Celebration shirt that has made me completely uh, broke. I like that. Someone who's been <laughs> broke even before Star Wars shirts, it's Kylo Ken. Ken Napsog is here. I'm a hobo. Right next to him, it's Mark 2D2. He's cracking out something today. It is good Gunk to be chilling. back, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I have not been here in three weeks. I'm sorry that we had to shut down production on Jedi Council, uh, but we're uh, back up Ma and running. Mark, Mark, we, we've, we've been on. We've been on. How's that? We, just kidding. All right, as Mark chews his gum, we're going to move forward to the stories of the day. First, let's go to Star Wars movie news. Everything happening in the world of Star Wars movie news. We're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down. Mark, what do you got? Was that a Spaceballs reference? Chew your gum. Mm -hmm. From President Script? No, it wasn't. No. All right. Hey, well, breaking news that not even Christian may be aware of is that they just unveiled the loose schedule for D23. It's a huge convention that happens every summer. This week, right before Comic-Con, where Disney shows all their latest animated and live action projects including stuff like Marvel and Star Wars so on Friday we are gonna get the animated slate that's gonna be in the afternoon then on Saturday morning at 10 or 10 30 a.m. is when they kick off the live action panel where you could get last Jedi stuff and more importantly Chris we're hearing a lot of whispers that they might unveil Han Solo footage for the very first time is your odds have they changed at all since I haven't been here in some three years no not as far as d23 I mean I think for a little bit now I've been saying that it makes the most sense that they would really put a push on Han Solo for D23 because I mean the only the only audible there is that it, whether or not they, just, they decide ah we can just announce a couple things and then we'll give it a push at Comic-Con but I don't see that happening I think that D23 because of when it comes out it, D23 is in July and then the movie will come out less than a year later mm -hmm. and it comes out in May of 2018 it's going to really be the last convention they have to really push. At New York Comic Con, they could give a push also if they wanted to, but I think it would make sense. It's their convention. Showing footage is very interesting. I think that I thought maybe like a little bit of a teaser trailer or something too. Maybe that's kind of what they mean. But I think we'll get that. I think that they're going to – because when we went to D23 two years ago, the ending announcement for Star Wars was the park. And to them – and to be honest – We, we were, got a poster too. We got a poster. We got a very cool we, poster. We got a cool poster. But it's funny because you look back at that, that you know, the announcement of the park, and at the time, everybody's like, oh, okay, that, I mean, that's cool. It's a pretty big, huge announcement, and we're all going to spend a lot of time there, and some of us will probably lose significant others because of it. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it, it was a pretty relevant thing. It just wasn't the kind of news that we maybe thought we were going to get there. I think we might get that kind of news this time around. I think that this, the solo stuff is pretty much a, a take it to the bank, locked in. It's the other stuff behind it is what you're going to get because we know that Marvel's feature film panel is going to, I mean, excuse me, Disney's feature film panel is going to really focus on live action, Marvel, and Star Wars. Those are the three that, and they'll have this, I mean, think they had Finest Hours or something that popped in there last time. Just, they want, because they want to push their other movies. I no, get it. No, it makes sense. That was just, it was such like a blip on the radar was, it, that disappeared. So that Chris Pine is handsome in person, man. But I think that's what we're getting. And I think that they, if, I think that what they really should do, if they want, because we've been saying for the last four years, they really want to make D23 relevant. And when they did it two years ago, it was, it, it was cool. And they kind of, and they, they, there was some certain stuff that nobody got to see. And they, and the, the talk of the town was the Civil War footage that they showed. But it still didn't do that big power punch that we were waiting for. This could be it. What do you think? I hope that it's it. I have a hard time predicting that just because for so long in my career, I've operated under the assumption that Comic-Con, specifically San Diego Comic-Con, is the place for big announcements to happen. And now it's it clearly is a trend for, you know, a Star Wars celebration to pop up and for it to focus mm -hmm. on their feature films. And then we have D23, which I've kind of been looking at as their place to showcase their other live action movies, specifically like the princess and kid friendly type movies, the live action uh, adaptations that they're doing right now. And then maybe I guess that would be the place for Han Solo because the fact that those rumors are popping up right now does not surprise me because I think that's the reason why we didn't get it at Star Wars Celebration. And you know, what else are you gonna show at this point from that movie that is gonna get people excited except for some super early footage? And it's right. obviously not gonna be 
like fully a fully finished scene or anything along those lines but even some behind the scenes stuff that's that's actually the perfect place to release a small behind the scenes featurette here's what we've been doing since we've started production that we can show you right now that's the place to do that it's not going to happen at comic-con i feel like comic-con is the place for marvel stuff and new york comic-con as much as I want to see that become a thing that has real movie news, it has been so long since I think anything like of note like to the masses has been announced there. New York Comic Con made some strides last year where they had some John Wick footage that nobody had seen before. They had some War for the Planet of the Apes footage. I'm not saying that it's going to be the place where Star Wars is going to land, but wouldn't that put, if you need to put New York City on the radar anymore, that would certainly do the job. Oh, I'd love to see that happen. What do you think, Mark? I think that you're going to see Han Solo footage because l l let's remember, Christian brought it up earlier, is that this convention is going to take place at the beginning or middle of July, and then you're going to have less than a year before Han Solo comes out. So that's really in line with what Disney generally likes to do with their huge properties is get at least a teaser trailer out there a year in advance. We can all start buzzing about it. And unlike The Last Jedi, I don't think there's going to be the shroud of secrecy around the Han Solo movie. There's going to be surprises in there they don't want to give away till we actually see the movie, but they want to show everybody a lot like they did with Rogue One that, hey, we're making new movies that are not in line with the Skywalker trilogies that we're also cranking out. So I think you're going to see Han Solo footage in there. They may be a little more mum on The Last Jedi. I don't see a lot of of that happening at Comic-Con. I do think that, that as far as the Marvel stuff goes, they might hold some Marvel stuff for Comic-Con. I think that this D23 is going to be heavy on Han Solo and, of course, Disney's Bears. Ken? Disney Nature's Bears. Uh, first of all, the, only, the thing that I'm thinking when you told me that story is 10.30 Saturday morning, I'm going to have to get a hotel room. I, I can't do it without breakfast. We'll I'm going to get there early. Yeah, we're going to get, get one. Early. Christian knows how to steal yeah, free yeah, breakfast. We'll, we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's so interesting to hear this discussion about conventions and what they've become. You're so right, Perry. Like you just, you, you, we're, we're accustomed to needing and wanting big news to come out of these events. New York Comic Con is actually, I think, sometimes by numbers more attended than San Diego. It is. It just never has that feel. But it's a fun con. It is a great, uh, greatly run. So uh, I've still I, never been. Yeah, it's it's great. Know. You'd love a lot, a lot of Schmoes fans there too, a lot, and a lot of Collider fans as well. So there's more than just pizza in New York. Well, I yeah. know that, but it's not, not pizza but and no, Starbucks. But That's no actually good, all there is but there. There's no good pizza anywhere else. There's, Perry has 12 diners. She was a I regular do, at that. We probably won't go to. Um, I do think you're gonna get uh, like a turkey leg at Disneyland. You're gonna get the fans excited. Something to chew on with Han Solo. Not a lot. I'm, I I I still think we might get Last Jedi stuff. It's still in that promotional vain I, I, sure. it, it's leading up so uh, i i definitely think if i'm if i'm predicting laying down money you could also see some han solo sorry to cut you up you could also do a uh, a behind the scenes don't, on, don't on the last jedi do mm -hmm. that again yeah all right don't ever well it's not nice yeah but a bts on on, on uh, jedi last jedi okay movie. What's next, Mark? Well, in news that comes from a collectible hobby shop, surprisingly not delivered to us by Ken Knapsack, this actually comes from our friends at StarWarsNewsNet.com. The source is Mikado, and then a huge shout-out to Corey at MakingStarWars.net for also breaking this news that is, appears to be concept art of Kylo Ren's new space. He's got a new ship, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know what happened to that helmet, but he certainly has a new ship, and it's interesting to note a couple features on there is that the wings have a hexagonal shape, which is kind of like the TIE Interceptors, and that's clearly a ode to Darth Vader's ship, but also, if you look at this, you see the rear thrusters that tend to resemble those of the Millennium Falcon, mm -hmm. which is his daddy's ship. Christian, you see this. Are you buying the Lego immediately? Um, no, but that's not. that doesn't mean I don't like it. It just means that I don't buy the toys the way like Ken Knapsack does, so he I'm going to go ahead and throw it to Ken and say, Ken... I know you don't like to see these things normally, <laughs> but you like Lego so much. Are you happy to see this? And what do you think of the design? I'm, I'm happy to have another item in my room that will keep women away. This is going to be good. Um, yeah, I love it. Yeah, you know, it's it's got the tie advanced look. It's got the tie interceptor look. A little Falcon. It's kind of an ugly ship from the old EU, but in a, in a cool fashion. Uh, this all, you know, tie, this is what I would expect, and it's what I would want. Sometimes right. I want my expectations to be delivered in this kind of simple, direct manner. It looks like Kylo Ren would be like, oh. I need a ship. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it look like my grandfather. <laughs> I like that. Marcus Aurelius? Yeah, uh, John Burns is the, uh, is the artist who did a rendition of it. And in his painting, you can also see the cockpit, which reminds mm -hmm. me of the Money Falcon's cockpit. I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, the Money Falcon is off to the side, but this one, dead on. And according to him, it's a B-29 style cockpit, which I've never been in a B-29. I've been in a lot of other B, various flights of fancy I've been on in the past. And this ship 
might be the fastest. I'm not going to say it's faster than the Millennium Falcon. This baby is making a Kessel run in a small number of parsecs. Mm. Cool. I like this. I, and I do like the fact that it has hints of the, the Falcon and, and Vader's TIE Fighter in it, too. I think that's really important when family is clearly so important in the, the Star Wars universe. And I just want to see him fly this thing. We have not seen him do that yet. Yeah. And I want to see what right, he's like. Right. There. Well, I mean, that's a good point, because the question is, like, before he went to kind of off the deep end and he spent some time with his pops and how much did his dad teach him how to fly and how much did his uncle teach him how to fly those are two really good pilots you know he's got in his family so I would love to hear more about the history and, and learn more about him as an actual pilot so the fact that he's getting this ship and see what he can do in it that's pretty cool uh, what's next? Uh, next up, we have a couple pieces of information from the new Han Solo movie. The first one comes from the most reliable site on the internet eBay. There's been some things that have surfaced recently on eBay. A person who claims to have been associated with the Star Wars Red Cup project, which mm -hmm. is the Han Solo code name. There's been some things that looks like costumes, that looks like concept art, and maybe even a set location. So let's bring up, that's the set location first. And when you look at that, it's this overhead shot of what you see is to be a big building that looks like some ships and some other equipment. So I look at that, Christian. I'm thinking some sort of spaceport-ish maybe reminiscent of a Moss Eisley, yeah. of a Tatooine. Let's talk about that image first before we get to the other concept. Sure. Are, when you look at that, are you smelling Jakku? Are you smelling Tatooine? Are you smelling a new desert planet? Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a desert planet. It could just be a certain part of a planet. It could be Corellia. Uh, we, ah, we, yeah. Interesting. It's, it's too hard to tell from just that port, you know, but I think that... It, it, we're going to repeat the same thing we say every single time when it comes to Star Wars production photos. It just makes you feel, okay, good. Not only does it feel real that they're finally getting into it, but it's also exciting because what, it's just a process. You see the pictures first, then you get you know, some stills, then or stills first, actually stills in production, and then you get a, a, the inevitable trailer that will come soon. So, Or you know, even teaser trailer, whatever it might be, a D23 or Comic-Con. So yeah, I, I, like the, I like what we're seeing so far. Ken? I have it on good authority. You can mark it down here. You can tweet Pablo later. It's canon that this is a new planet called Sandisharon. It is a, a planet <laughs> completely of sand. Uh, it's a third one in the galaxy, and that's what this is. Uh, it's canon. Uh, confirmed it. Don't even ask. Sandisharon. Sandisharon okay. like is where it is. No, this is great. <laughs> I love this kind of stuff. I, I don't really watch this kind of stuff. You know, I, I, you know, it's not that it's super spoilery. I just let them do their thing. Yeah. Let them make their movie. But it is kind of cool to be, ooh, what do we got? A new space bar i like it uh perry will you be going to sandishron uh yeah please is, <laughs> is it nicer than harloff minor uh well Har we've never seen the terrain of harloff minor right, harloff minor is more like I, I look at it like the barstow of outer space yeah yeah, yeah. No, that's not true it's yeah pretty classy joint yeah <laughs> It's, maybe it's like the baker. It's got a bun boy and a thermometer. That oh, goes you know, you know the well, rules. The funny thing is that we're so prone to speculation <laughs> when we see images like this. But this could be because right now, when you look at it overhead, it doesn't even look as big as Moss Eisley. This looks like the Burbank to Moss Eisley's <laughs> LAX. However, we love the fact that they're shooting on real sets and they're using real construction crews. But you could CGI the hell out of this thing later. So this could be the biggest yeah. spaceport we've mm -hmm. ever seen Absolutely. in our entire lives. This is just the real shot before they put all that after stuff in there. So I wouldn't get too ahead of ourselves saying, oh, this is just a little blip on the radar screen. This might be the uh, the Denver airport where there's a lot of stuff underneath that they don't want to tell you about. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, all right, what's next? Well, we got the concept art, too, to talk right, about right, because right. what we have up here is it's basically an update to the previous story, but you have these listings where you have a look at Han Solo. This is concept art of Han Solo. Do we have that image? I'm getting the maybe sign. And it looks to be Alden Ar Ironreich's appearance in the Han Solo costume. Now, it looks pretty classic, Han Solo. He's got that jacket from uh, somewhat reminiscent of an Empire Strikes Back look, so check that out. Or it might still be available on eBay. We also have some ship specs, and the ship is nowhere near like the Millennium Falcon, but it does look a little clunky. It doesn't look as fast as Kylo Ren's ship, but you guys can check this out on StarWarsNewsNet.com. There's some cool items on there. Or I guess, Christian, yeah. now, every time we do the rounds to get news for this show, we should pop by eBay, because you never, <laughs> you know, never know what rogue member of a Star Wars crew is posting stuff on eBay. Does this person still have an employment opportunity at Lucasfilm? No, they gave <laughs> me my latte before. Uh, they, <laughs> they absolutely not. I mean, it's like... This is crazy. It goes, it goes back to what Ken was saying before, too. It's just like, cut it out. 
Mm-hmm. It just stop that. It's uh, there's certain things I want to see and certain things that I don't. Yeah. And and l- let Lucasfilm and let Disney release stuff when they want to release stuff. I think that it's cool that we're starting to get images, but let them do it on their own. It's like oh, oh, oh I'm gonna release his new shoes, and it's like <laughs> it, it's 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 all about the hits. It's all. It's, it's these all, are Han's new Sandisheron boots. Yeah. It's like, so for, eBay st- all weather. Yeah. eBay stop that. It's like just stop selling stuff on eBay, especially if you had the opportunity to work on the movie. It's like you should be ashamed of yourself. I don't. I don't spite any any of the sites that ran with it because it's the it's the Story news and stuff they want to get. And you get this stuff. Mm-hmm. Someone sends it to you, and that's what that's what you do, and you break it. Then absolutely, I understand that. But the people who actually leaked it themselves, come on. That's so messed up. Yeah. I even felt guilty just looking at this. Yeah, it's pretty cool, though. I, there's the there's a couple. Cool. It makes me happy that there's so few bids on these things on eBay right now. But that's that's not cool. That's more, Toy Story mug. More so than thinking about what this shows us about the new Han Solo movie. I, all I want to know is who this individual is and how quickly they will get fired. That's terrible. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kenneth Knapp Sakian. What? From Sandishron. Well, uh, Sandishron. Uh, sorry, I, uh, that story didn't have the updated pictures, so I'm, I'm, I'm peeking on the. Oh, check it out! Yeah. There. yeah, yeah. Here you yeah. go. Here you I go. Look at that. these yeah. specs. Look at these specs. Yeah. This is good. That's this is good. a gorgeous spaceship. I can put you in this thing by the end of the day for. Fifteen thousand space bucks. Like this a, thing looks like a Toyota Corolla of yeah, outer space. Looks, Whereas, I was gonna say it's like my Camry of Star Wars. Right. Yeah. The X Wing has a lot of get up and go. This doesn't appear to be that. This appears to be more of a transport ship than anything else, which I'm sure you're gonna sure. see. Look, guys, you're gonna see a lot of spaceships in Star Wars. And as far as the overall leaks go, I think the way Lucasfilm looks at this is that this is not like a football game where you're trying to shut the other team out. This is basketball. You know the other team's gonna score a lot. You know things are gonna get out of your set. There's gonna be leaked pictures, mm-hmm. there's gonna be this. You're not gonna be able to prevent a team from scoring points. You just hope to stop the big leak and so far Lucasfilm has done a great job with their new Star Wars movies preventing us from seeing the big reveal or that huge surprise that they didn't want anybody to know about so when a ship leaks I'm fine with that if that gets through our radar yeah, hold your fire right. there's no life forms aboard right, right. I agree uh, with that all right what's next more toy leaks Christian Uh-oh. <laughs> this time we go to the last Jedi the black series of toys might have been introduced there might be an inventory and I think uh, you throw the spoiler alert up here because there's some there's some things that you're going to see that you might not want to check out if you want to keep secrecy for The Last Jedi because the highlighted names in there include some classic ones that we don't know would ever come back to the series. Now, it should be pointed out that the Black Series has toys that come out every so often. Yeah. And sometimes these are just classic toys like, oh, yeah, let's release another Darth Maul or another I think you there's know, a Plagueis one toy. that came out a, a while so ago. Three too. and three quarters. It's great. I, I own it. Yeah, The yeah. Plagueis one, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's ones that come out. Right. That are, you know, uh, legends and stuff, too, and is popular characters. They, they pay attention to who the fans really enjoy. It doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. mean that they're part of the lore, but some, what are some of those names? So when you see a highlighted name like Qui-Gon Jinn, it's like, oh, is he going to appear as a Force Ghost? Is Liam Neeson back? Does he still have the leather jacket from Taken? We don't know. It might still just be the Phantom Menace, although I will say, after rewatching the prequels for Star Wars May the 4th, Yoda does clearly tell Obi-Wan. Did you watch the prequels yet? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. I, I watched the whole things in Nashville. Oh, I awesome. ate hot chicken, got drunk, watched, watched Star all, Wars. You watched all seven of them? And then I did jokes, and then I got back and watched more Star Wars, yeah. Wow, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, it, it was awesome. I didn't watch Force Awakens, that ain't airing yet. But oh, okay. uh, they, they aired the first Oh, they aired six. a month. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. And, uh, and, and Yoda does mention to Obi-Wan, he's like, look, Qui-Gon has figured out how to cheat death and become a Force ghost, so maybe you get to see him. There's a Lando Calrissian one. There's Imperial Royal Guards. There is a one that's not highlighted called Poopy Butthole. Nice. Not sure if Poopy Butthole is going to appear in The Last Jedi. They're going to save him for episode nine, but we'll it's have really to wait nice. for more info. I thought info that was a joke. Poopy Butthole. It really, it really says that. Well, no, there's also Rick and Morty. These aren't these are black series of figures. They're, it's not just from Star Wars. It's other toys and stuff that are collectibles. But um, so Poopy Butthole. Is that like doctored or something? No, no, it's uh, from it's, it's from, from other toys. It's not Star Wars. It's like it's, some it's other. You don't know that. Well, what you freaking that? toy line is that? It's the Who's Poopy selling that to line. kids? Yeah. yeah. Hey, oh my kids. God. Oh, lots of Poopy Butthole. Oh. Um, <laughs> remember be. to wipe, kids. <laughs> 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 Who's <laughs> using the toilet today? Oh, Eat your eggs. Oh, it's it's Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Okay, oh, okay. all right. Never mind. Never mind. I'd also buy that toy at AdamandEve.com. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's the planet you want to go to? <laughs> Sandish Run. There you go. Don't get sand in your poopy butt. I have one question. <laughs> I have one question about this one. <laughs> um, why is Darth Vader spelled wrong? It says Darth Vader. Vador. I don't know. I think somebody was drunk when they made this list. Yeah. What's next? Yeah. 
So a listing called Poopy Butthole. You're but, you know, spelling. Well, well, before moving on to your Poopy what? Butthole, let's, let's talk about Qui Gon Jinn for a second. Okay. Yes. Because not only did the, the moment you're talking about in Revenge of the Sith, mm -hmm. um, there's also the whole line, in, the whole through line in the Clone Wars yeah, yeah. TV series that happens. I mean, we see him, we see him in yeah. form when he visits Anakin, and and we didn't. We've we've always talked about. You and McGregor and Yoda and possibly Hayden Christensen, the Liam Neeson Qui Gon Jinn conversation hasn't really come up much. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it maybe kind of passing, but not in detail. Is there a shot here that that Liam maybe is Liam Neeson in theory does a lot of stuff and yeah. has been in a lot of really good movies, has been in a lot of really bad movies, uh, and he shows up in a lot of things and he's, he lends his voice to all the Clone Wars stuff. He likes to work. Yeah. Um, the question is not whether or not he would do it, because I think that is an absolute 100% yes. The question is, Ken, is there a need for Liam Neeson, Qui-Gon Jinn in this, and would he show up to tie the prequels all together? I, I, would, I would love that from a certain point of view. Yeah. I would love to see <laughs> Hayden uh, back in some kind of way, if it makes sense. The Ray vision in Force Awakens was one of the best parts of the movie. It was intriguing. We love that kind of stuff. It's speculation rich. Uh, reminds me of Game of Thrones stuff where you, you're seeing things from the past and maybe the future. So I, I like that if it, if it works, if it's forced in, like anything, if it's forced in. But yeah, I absolutely believe... Uh, you know, Qui-Gon is an important Jedi in the grand scheme of things. Mm -hmm. And if Kylo's doing some kind of, you know, walking down the, the halls of memory and I don't know, you know, you got people popping up and saying hi, uh, I, I could see it working out and I wouldn't mind it. I like Mark, Qui-Gon. You, you know, I still consider, just because I can't imagine, oh, I, I still can't imagine The Last Jedi without the Forest Ghost of Obi-Wan appearing. I think that is a 100% done deal lead pipe lock. Okay. Now, I also imagine a cave where Luke goes to pray or meditate, whatever Jedi do during their weed hours, and there's a council around him of Force ghosts, where you have a Yoda here. A lot like when the, Force, awesome. the, like the Jedi council was in the prequels, yeah, where you have that. a Yoda, you have a Qui-Gon, you have a Hayden Christensen, yeah. Anakin, you yeah. have Obi-Wan, and Luke consults with all of them. The only thing that is stopping me from saying all of that is a done deal is how grumpy Luke sounded in yeah. the trailer. Now, yeah. that might be a misdirect, but Luke sounds like a guy who's very disillusioned with the notion of the Force. Now, when we saw him at the end of Force Awakens, we're like, this guy has been off on an island, he's been praying, he's been practicing his Force. When we heard him, in the last Jedi trailer, he sounds like a dude who has done nothing but watch college football on that mm -hmm. island for the last six years and has done nothing force sensitive whatsoever. So I'm still inclined to believe you're going to get a collection of force visage, including Qui-Gon Jinn. But Luke, stop being so grumpy, man. Mm -hmm. Train wreck. Come on, buddy. Perry. I think that could possibly happen, but maybe not at the end of Last Jedi. I feel like he needs to go on that journey that earns him that vision, or maybe even after Luke, Ray will have that, and that's kind of the way we'll take things uh, full circle. But going back to this list here, the one that I kept honing in on was the one that they were speculating was Snoke, the, the figure, because mm -hmm. that's... That's what I want to say. No that figure, that yeah. is kind of what I want. I mean, I don't have a toy collection as big as Ken's, Good for but you. Good uh, for you. well, yeah, Good for you. I, I do. I do have a little bit of that problem. Oh, I you to go to Jeremy Johnson's off. place. It's like a oh, night at the museum with hot my toys. God. But I think that it, it, if you look at all of those figures on there. I think the one that sells out first is definitely Snoke. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's the first Snoke figure that right, yeah, exactly. That has come out. Yeah. And it's they have uh, he's called Victor here, and they have a, a throne exclusive too. <laughs> You, you look you really stressed about? out just, right now. No, just picture what Mark is pitching for Last Jedi. I'm picturing Luke talking to Force Yoda, Force Qui-Gon, Force Obi-Wan, Force Darth Vader, Anakin, and, and you pull back and uh, Ray's just watching Luke talk to some rocks with kelp on it. <laughs> 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 episode of The Leftovers. Yeah, like like Last, last Man on Earth style. See, like, I thought you were going to pull back and it also reveals the force goes to poopy butthole. <laughs> that, well, that too. But, but then you're Luke's like, for a sketch yeah, idea. Yeah, Luke's like, shh, shh. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> and there's just right. a rock. Wait, right. he's, never, he's never really ever seen Yoda. <laughs> yeah. or You're right, right. They've been dead for years. Oh, All great. right, now Sorry, we're going to move on days. to movie. We did movie news. We're going to go into another segment here now that we've done with all the movie news. And it is simply called What's the Deal with Canon? Come on, Perry. 
Um, <laughs> canon. I like that version. Everything that's happening in the world of Star Wars that connects back to the movies, whether it's comic books, video games, the TV series, there's a lot going on right now. Novels, obviously. And before I, we do that, I also got to tell you guys that when we went to Orlando, look at that bad boy right there. They handed out very limited amount of Ooh, those wait. posters and the clatter. And it was really cool and, and a bit humbling, to be honest with you. It was a bunch of people were having us sign these posters. So what we decided to do was we signed a bunch of them. The whole Collider crew did it. And we're going to do a contest for you guys out there. All you need to do is go to YouTube, make a video for, I think, like 45 seconds, I think they said. I 30. think the, the magic number was 10 seconds. 10 seconds. So 10 seconds. Thank you, Perry. Um, 10 seconds of why you enjoy Collider video. Go ahead and record that for 10 seconds. Send it on over to collidervideo at gmail.com. We're going to go through those and watch a bunch of them. And Cody will be watching all of them. And then we will then send you the poster for The Last Jedi, signed by the Collider crew. So thank you. But now getting into canon. Mark, we have a new uh, story that we didn't have on the notes here today. Something pretty cool. That's right. Uh, we're not going to the, the, the other one first. No. So you should probably intro it. So I'll do it. Okay. That's nice. Because you, you forgot it. Oh, no, 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 I got it, yeah. Right. Uh, Ian McDiarmid is going to be there doing a voice in Rebels, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Ian McDiarmid, he may sound familiar because he's the guy that played Palpatine in Return of the Jedi and in all of the prequel movies, and he is one of the, I think he's the best actor in the prequels by far. He also just encompasses the character of Senator Palpatine, of Darth Sidious, of the Emperor, both in body and in spirit and in voice. His vocal talents are going to be lended to the show Rebels for the final season. And now, Christian, you hear Ian's going to be doing a voice. We're betting it's the Emperor. Well, of course it's the Emperor. But if that's indeed the case, now they said, like you said, Warwick Davis was um, mm -hmm. he is doing a, a voice this, this season. Rook. Rook mm -hmm. And he's wrapped. But from what the rumor here from Star Wars Newsnet, they say that a couple of weeks later, or, or forget what, what it was, just not, shortly after, Ian McDermott came in and recorded a voice. Now, there's two potential things here. The, what the betting man should go for is that he's going to be doing the Emperor in season four of Rebels. The outside bet is that both Warwick Davis and Ian McDermott were doing voices for the new series, um, which I don't think is the case. I think that maybe if you're going to have the Emperor in something else and get everything that you can, I, I'm torn on this story for a, a, two, two reasons. The first is that Emperor Palpatine is my favorite character in Star Wars. Um, I think that Ian McDermott brought such a great classic acting style to that character and hearing him talk about the Emperor and what he's done with the Emperor to see him return he would be w one of many original characters to return whether it's Anthony Dan in Rebels Anthony Daniels James Earl Jones Billy D. Williams Liam Neeson in, in Clone Wars actually um, there and you know Alec Guinness would have probably appeared too, but Stephen Sand did such an amazing job, and that's the exception here is because you couldn't get someone like Alec Guinness, so you had the brilliant Stephen Stanton do the voice. The problem is, is that our pal Sam Witwer does the voice for Palpatine, and if you watch that clip when he does the voice in season two, you close your eyes. When we heard that at the premiere of, of at Celebration a couple of years ago, everyone thought, oh, Ian McDermott's back. Sam's that got the best emperor hands down because he doesn't do an impression. He becomes the emperor. He becomes uh, Palpatine. He, he, and so I would like, I would be okay, obviously, if Sam just kept on doing it. But there's also, well, yeah, you got Ian McDermott. I feel like almost even Sam would be like, well, yeah, I get it. You got Ian McDermott. It's Ian McDermott. Uh, so it, it's tough. Either way, I asked my first, I think I got like the first or second question at the Rebels conference, the press conference this year at Celebration. And I asked Dave Filoni, I said, he said, you said in season three, definitive no, that Darth Vader was not coming back for season three. Will you definitively say that Darth Vader and El Emperor Palpatine are not coming back for season four? He said, I will not definitively say that. Ooh. So that means to me that Palpatine and this rumor is true. Perry? Yeah, I, I like the sound of that. And while I do feel bad for Sam, it, it also seems like maybe having um, having a McDermott come in to voice this character. One, obviously you can't say no for the reasons you just right. pointed out. But if they give him this role, doesn't that open the door for Sam to do some other things? I mean, clearly he is an incredibly talented voice actor. They have season four. They're going to do a new show. 
I kind of like the idea that it frees him up to, I mean, maybe even play a brand new character and actually make, uh, he's done an exceptional Sam job with everything. F- but Filoni gets, a kick, Filoni gets a kick out of like ribbing Sam Witwer. He always breaks Sam Witwer's chops on stage, but he also, he always uses him. He always brings him in there. I think Sam Witwer, if, so if we were doing a draft on people that you could guarantee mm-hmm. being a voice in the new series, I would put him in there. I yeah. would love to see Sam be in a position kind of like Ashley Eckstein and Ahsoka, where the two of them are so tightly together together that like mm-hmm. one is the other so i want to see that come up for sam ken yeah i i he mcdermott's great and i think we all can agree that him back would be a plus and that, that sam i feel bad maybe we did this to sam by him losing that star wars trivia <laughs> question lucasfilm was like let's not use the guy anymore i'm kidding um <laughs> i i i don't know the use of the emperor has to be very careful which i know feloni and team would would do that the right way because as we know the emperor barricades himself away from the galaxy. He's not seen or heard. Uh, it's it's holo vids where he looks younger and, and more healthier than he actually is, all those kind of things. So uh, I'd be very, I'm intrigued by the idea of them using him in Rebels and how they would do it. So basically the Emperor is like the Mr. Burns of outer space where yes. they have the file photo of Mr. Burns and yes. he's 30 years younger. I think this makes perfect sense for the time and place that Rebels is going to be in in season four where, yeah, the Emperor likes to stay in the shadows when he needs to emerge to save the Empire, he's going to do so. And the Empire is starting to really feel that rebellion come together as one, so you need to throw strong force on the other side and that is what the emperor would show up for now whether ian mcdermott is going to be voicing the emperor the betting man yeah it's got to be that now the world of adr christian as we know is fraught with women money and casual dress and i know josh wolf who knows freddie prince jr who has told me that sometimes you go and you record stuff a year two years in advance when it's actually used so this particular session that he did could have been for Rebel Season 4. It could have been for something we're not going to see for three years because they want to get the yeah. voice on track. I would say it's Rebel Season 4. Well, remember, even when, when Katie Sackhoff came in and was on the Shmo show uh, and she talked about she, the, the, you know, she didn't mean to, but she kind of let out the fact that she was going to have a voice in, in Rebels. She's like, oh, I, just, I did that so long ago. And it hasn't even come out yet. The, the, what, right. she, what she did right. it. And we, yeah, they, they're done with, they're done recording Season 4. I mean, that's, that's, that's done. That's a done deal. But I will also say that um, in regards to Palpatine, what Mark just brought up there, from where they are timeline-wise, it's the last season, and we're going to end. And I think that Filoni kind of hinted at it. I think it's pretty much you can guarantee that you're going to see this, th- their point of view with what happened during Rogue One, um, you know, that, that battle. So I think that there are, you, how do you do that, and how do you have all this stuff there and not have Palpatine at least have a scene? Like something, I, I, I would have been, I, I'm not disappointed that he wasn't in, in Rogue One, but I would have been okay if he had something in there. I think it was more about the mm-hmm. generals and, and the commanders and everything like that. I, that's, that's fine, and the Grand Moffs. But I think that uh, he needs to be at least in one scene for season four. Yeah, I wouldn't expect him to be even like the level of like a Darth Maul was or, or even no. a Vader was. No. But I think that it not only for one scene in an actual episode, but when you see the whatever this, the, the second half of the season four trailer is going to be, you know you're going to get a Palpatine pop in there, and it's going to set the internet on fire. It's going to be cool to watch. Yeah. All right. What's next? All right. Well, new comic book, Screaming Citadel. We got Screaming Citadel. Am I saying it loud enough? No. Screaming Citadel, written by Kieran Do Gillen. Do your high-pitched scream and scream, but not into the mic. Like, uh, what's uh, my high-pitched scream? You have a really high-pitched scream. That, like, when, ah! <laughs> Screaming really Citadel! <laughs> Citadel! <laughs> Cody Hall is using a hand gesture I don't think is appropriate for you. Sorry, Aww. Cody. <laughs> Screaming Citadel is the name. It is written by Kieran Gillen, who is not the lead singer of Deep Purple. And the premise is as such, rebel pilot and rogue archaeologist wander side by side into the darkest shadows of the galaxy as Luke Skywalker reluctantly teams up with Dr. Afra. The doctor cures Luke of a poopy butthole and leads him to the Screaming <laughs> Citadel. Will Luke find what he's looking for? Can Afra be trusted? Or will they both wind up victims of the Citadel's queen? Christian, we go to you. Um, I'm digging this so far. And I think that it, what I like about it is the way they've, t- if you've been invested in whether it's the Star Wars line or the Afro line or the Darth Vader line, that you're being rewarded for being so invested in all these characters and, and their past and how it leads up here. I also think that it's a good starting off point if you already know Luke and you understand kind of where he is from, and that you'd have to introduce yourself a little bit to Afra, but they're kind of teaming up together at this point. There's some stuff that it felt a little vampire at one point where the Queen's like, I haven't tasted a Jedi in such a long time. Whoa. So it's like, all right, take it easy. Uh, but there, and, and Luke is that kind of naive farm boy that we get. And, um, and I think that um, I was 
reading, uh, after I read the comic, I read the Star Wars Newsnet review, and I think that they're kind of on the same page, too, that it's like, it is, it does feel a little bit like he's super naive, learning his powers, and I think that, um, yeah, I think that it's, it's a good start for sure. Did anybody else read this thing? I haven't had a chance to yet. So it's uh, okay. on my pull list. It's waiting for me. Okay. Uh, a little behind. But yeah, I'm excited to see it. Dr. Aphra's a great character. Yeah. Uh, they're doing some good stuff with Luke during this time period. Some stuff gets a little, you know, a little wild yeah. out there with the comics, but that's what comics that's are kind of do. for. Yeah. Um, you know, Yoda fighting a rock monster was interesting if you read that stuff. But um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm very interested in this team up because I think it's key to the Aphra character to connect her to the. The bigger, I mean, she's already been connected with Vader, but you know right. what I mean, to connect her with the, the, the main characters. That's great stuff. One of the cool things about, look, I get nervous anytime you have a comic book or a novel come out because you're expanding what happened in between the movies. Like, like when you're taking liberties with the time period between, this is between A New Hope and Empire, correct? So it makes me a little nervous, like, okay, how many adventures did Luke go on because he still was learning the ways of the Force in Empire? But rewatching Empire again this weekend, one of my favorite scenes in Star Wars is when he's hanging upside down, and the last time we saw him, he's getting a medal, he hit a lucky shot. Now, he calms himself, he uses Jedi powers to grab the lightsaber right before the Wampa gets him, and in that moment, you're thinking, what the hell has this guy been through since the last time we saw him at the medal ceremony? He's been through some stuff, he's learning the ways of the Force, that's an indication, and probably so is this too, so I would actually be interested yeah. to check out okay. the Screaming Citadel as we started the comic cubicle. Mark, put that in my box. Exactly why the Star Wars universe Universe is so amazing because it does it it doesn't rely on it where you can only appreciate what happens to Luke in Ep five because you knew what happened to him in between the two. But at the same time, if you get all this kind of stuff, it does pave the way perfectly. And that is why I'm broke. All right, what's next? <laughs> next up is Battlefront 2 news. Perk your ears up, Kenny, hmm. because according to the CEO of EA, Andrew Wilson, he said at a recent investors event that Battlefront 2 will have more than three times the content than the previous game at launch. The key two words in there being at launch. So Battlefront, it will say whatever you want about the original game. It appears that EA is learning from their mistakes and saying we don't need to have all these add-on packages. We need to have a great game at launch again. So three times the content. Christian, is it going to be on your wish list this holiday season? Yeah, Battlefront 2 it is because I think that one of the things that I really applauded them for, Ken and I were in the panel together at Celebration. I turned to him I go, it looks like they were listening to the complaints. And we get a story mode. That was one of my biggest problems mm -hmm. with the first one is that I just – it was cool to be immersed in the world, but I, the gameplay didn't do it for me all the way. So I had to, I wanted to be invested more in the story. And the fact that they said it is a canon story, that's going to get me right away. Not only is it a canon story, but the fact of what the story is, one of the most impressive things, you and I speak about this all the time, one of the most impressive things is that the way that they've kind of humanized people in the Empire. And they're doing it again here with, with the lead characters. So I'm absolutely going to be getting this. Um, I can't wait to see it. And I hope that, the, that I'm as pleased with the product as I am kind of getting hyped up for it. Speaking of being broke, I own a PS4 because of Battlefront. And I'm having fun playing with it. But I'm, I'm god awful at the game. So when I first read a story like this, and it's like, there's going to be uh, however many times more vehicles and characters and everything. I get a, I just get a little nervous because if you're bad at gaming, it just it seems like a lot to wrap my head around. But at the same time, I have however many months to actually get a little better before jumping into this. And you know, I do want my money's worth. And as much fun as I have as I am having playing Battlefront, I need that story element. That that is what makes the biggest impression on me with the whole Star Wars universe. Is I want story. I want things to connect. And that's what we seem to be getting here. And I I just love the Imperial mindset. And if that's what I'm going to get in the story for this version of the game, I'm going to be thrilled to spend my money on it. More. I read the story, Christian, and I get very nervous for uh, our beloved Copster because he's going to have a new task, and that's going to be getting the PS4 up and running in our office because I know you're too busy to do it, and yeah. I'm sleeping a lot. So let's yeah. get Copster to hook that baby up because I think we need to run through. It's, it is hooked up. I, it's, I, I, I don't know about that. Even it if is. it's not, what does it take, five it's, minutes? <laughs> it's hooked up. It takes five minutes from somebody who's not this guy. Yeah, to hook a, it up. It is hooked up. I am into Battlefront 2. That trailer at Star Wars Celebration blew me away. I love that the story is canon. I love that we're following this rogue section of the Empire, the fire soldiers, whatever the hell they are. Sounds awesome. I'm in on Battlefront 2. Three times the content, Kenny Boy. That's good stuff. Inferno Squadron. 
Same thing. Close enough. He's Literally not the same read. thing. Uh, I, uh, I'm excited about this. Yeah, as you all know, I play Battlefront still. One of my favorite things to do is uh, just run around, find a tree, and just hide and cry underneath it because the battle's just too intense. That's the mode I love the most. Um, I really hope they add a uh, level where you can drink with Ewoks because I think that's needed too. Uh, I'm looking at the numbers that they're proposing, and some of this will be DLC. 39 maps, 36 game modes, 30 vehicles, 33 weapons, and 18 Heroes at launch. The hero choices, you don't play the game. You get Darth Vader, Emperor, Bosk. It's a weird choice. What's it? You don't want to play as Bosk? He's one of the better bounty hunters in the current league. Sure. Transdotions are. Transdotions are. Transdotions are. I don't know. Anyways, I'm excited for this. Excited for the playable, the canon story mode. And, you know, I'm excited to watch Christian run around. Uh, shooting up in the sky like uh, Goldeneye when you yeah. couldn't figure out how to do anything yeah. but slappers. I was that, I was that kid, too. No, I, I just, yeah, whatever. All right, what's next? <laughs> next up is we have a new comic in Rogue One, issue number two. You see Baze and Sherrod on the cover. You get much more than just that because you also get a little bit of an insight into Jin and Saw's backstory. Christian, it is still young in the Rogue One, a Star Wars story comic series. Yeah. How are you feeling so far? So far, so good. I mean, I think that what they do well with this series is um, it, it reminds me of like when Tim Burton's Batman came out in 89. They released the comic book for the whole entire movie afterwards. And I really enjoyed that comic because you saw little side things of the movie that you really liked already. And there's some brand new things that kind of popped up. And they do the same thing in this. And like you mentioned, Mark, there's the stuff, like just little flashback stuff they can do. And, that's, and that silly ass scene that I hate uh, in uh, Rogue One with the, what's the stupid monster called? Borg gullet! This stupid thing. Um, but when they have that Borg gullet, they, have, they show a little bit more about what Bodhi's actually thinking and what, what, what's happening and what he's seeing. And I thought that was cool, the way that they did that. So there are little side things. I don't, you know, you're not going to get too many big nuggets out of there, but I think there was some fun stuff. I think the scene with Saw Guerrero and he's with Jin and, and talking to Bail Organa. But Ken, you read the first one? Yeah, I'm an issue behind. The first one is great. Uh, the Force Awakens adaptation, which was uh, written by Chuck Wendig, actually is good, but it follows, you know, the movie. There's not a lot that they would add into it. This, much like the Rogue One novelization, this has things in it that help flesh out the story. Now, you could argue, well, if it wasn't in the movie, you know, that they should have put it in there if it's that important. And I, and I can understand that logic. But even Gareth Edwards has a note in the first one, like, hey, this movie had a lot of things in it that we didn't put in, in here now for the first time. You're seeing some of the stuff. For instance, uh, the reason Jin has a blaster when she first gets on that U-wing is she swiped it from a rebel officer she was walking by. That's kind of cool. Did that need to be in the movie? I guess not, but it's cool to see that character and her little scoundrel side of her, her in action. Just looking at some of the stuff about Saw and Jin and their background that was some of the best stuff in the novel you got a real sense of what the relationship was and her panic that the rebels who were there to rescue her were actually she thought sal's partisans trying to get her, get her back to saw and she didn't want that there's interesting things in the rogue one story and and i highly recommend you pick up is there stuff comics. in this that isn't in the novelization yeah little tiny little tiny bits here and there okay. yeah all right, what's next? Uh, next up, we have Slash Film doing what they do best, getting us excited about possible future characters in Star Wars canon or even the feature films. They did an article recently speculating that Snoke, we may be getting hints of who he is or where he comes from in some of the new Star Wars books, and that leads us right to Thrawn, the one that I had the pleasure of listening to half a chapter of when Christian and I were driving to a screening of Snatched. Now, Christian, Thrawn... Coming from the unknown regions, yeah. he mentions that quite a lot. When he's having a conversation with the Emperor, he says he offers information that there are threats lurking in the unknown regions, threats that will someday find your empire. I am familiar with many of them. And we also have another excerpt. Thrawn's discussion of the palace. Could the Emperor be planning something special? A series of expeditions into the unknown regions, perhaps? Do you think that Thrawn is going to be the conduit for fans of canon into learning more about who the Supreme Leader Snoke is? I do. Very much so, I do. From what they they set up, not only in the Thrawn novel, but what they set up in Empire's End. And and they've been really throwing this kind of subtly, if you will, but they've been they've been kind of showing you He's not anyone you know. Mm -hmm. He's not Plagueis. He's not Sifo-Dyas. He is no one you know. He is pure evil from a place you have no idea what it is. And I think that's a... And they've been setting up the unknown regions, wild space. They've been doing all these things now. And this is what's so fascinating about canon that I used to be... You know, obviously, back in when we first started the show, I was up. Oh, he's Plagueis. I am... 
I'm at 99% sure now that he's going to be, or 90, 95, we'll say, percent sure that he is going to be an unknown person that they, or the thing that they found from this space, that because the emperor was always, there's, there's always been these comparisons to who's, the, as far as the emperor being the most evil thing that we've ever seen in Star Wars universe, the most evil thing we've ever seen in the human race was Adolf Hitler. And when George Lucas originally wrote Palpatine was based off of Hitler and the Nazis and everything too. And one of the things that Hitler was always doing was was exploring whether it's wanting to be the first one to the moon and doing all this all these different things, science, and that plays into what the Emperor was doing. Also, he was exploring everything and and cloning and doing all these different things and ex exploration of of things. And I think this outside unknown region is another thing. And they're saying he's even more evil than Palpatine is, this, this Snoke. Uh, so I do think he's from the unknown regions. I do think that he, and, and, and Thrawn, what would be great, I don't see it happening, but what I would love to happen is if in season four of Rebels, the Emperor, because there's a scene in the Thrawn novel to where the Emperor and Thrawn meet for the very first time and why he's basically essentially recruited. Um, and they talk about the unknown regions. They talk about these things. I would love in season four if the Emperor, like we just talked about with Ian McDermott, has a scene with Thrawn and tells him he wants him to leave and explore those unknown regions and be gone. And that would explain why he's not around during the events of a, a New Hope, Empire, Return of the Jedi. Doesn't come back until Last Jedi or anything too. And why does he? Because he has been in connection with Snoke doing these things. He's been the one that's ultimately helped set it up. That would explain a lot and it would be a way that you could exp you could basically tell the feature film people feature film audience this is Thrawn you don't have to have read the book or the novel you can introduce him this was someone that was out exploring for the Emperor and has been for a very long time and I think that that's why I believe Snoke is part of the unknown regions Ken you also have been I think on the same page with me here you're you're off the you're off the he's no one else right he, he's someone new yeah I believe uh Snoke is Snoke is what I've been saying and, and I do believe he has something <laughs> to uh something to do with those unknown regions the unknown regions uh are very much mentioned I was even reading the the tail end of the story it talks about Star Wars land and what they're doing over it mm -hmm. with with Disneyland and, and Disney World uh uh that uh, the 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 place where Star Wars land is 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 a new canon planet somewhere on the edge of the unknown regions this, that, that mm. keeps coming up it all makes sense the empires and stuff what exactly it is you know there's a, a dark force calling to to palpatine yep. is it snoke going hey come have some tea with me we've got some things to talk about <laughs> or is it someone that you have to fight and defeat is it is it someone that this article speculate speculates does, does snoke defeat that evil to take over the first order and prove his worth in that way i don't know it's fun and uh i i like this idea now that 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 we all can kind of get on board with the idea that snoke is probably uh, his own his own character that yeah. it's not boba fett it's not kidster it's not Greedo. it's <laughs> nothing uh it, it it is what it is what do you think perry i've you know i've played the snoke theory game like everybody sure. has and until we landed on snoke is snoke i i haven't really gotten that excited about any of the other possibilities i've thought oh maybe this could work and it could have potential but this right now and especially after reading those novels and seeing the stars align i mean I don't know if I can go as far to say if they go this route and Snoke is Snoke from the Unknown Regions and right. all this, that people who have not read any of the novels will get the same feeling that we do from this because especially, and Lucas Siegel is a buddy of mine, he wrote this for Slash Film and even though I've read, read all the books that he's referencing and I was aware of the, uh, the Star Wars uh, land news, when you read it all presented as one piece and you could really see everything and how well it fits together in completely different ends and completely different books, they are paving the way to this so freaking beautifully in a way that not only serves Snoke as a truly evil villain, but it opens the door to so much more. I mean, we talk about these quotes all the time where they say, Star Wars, the possibilities are endless, wild space and unknown regions. There is so much interesting stuff to explore. And as someone who is drawn to like the Imperial evil mindset I like seeing more of that seeing that in the unknown regions and seeing the behavior in uh, in uh, wild space 
That is so insanely appealing to me. And they brought up Wild Space in Rebels with Zeb. Obviously, that's where his planet is from. And now, and with Eli, obviously, in the Thrawn novel, they are introducing these new places. What I think this also allows them to do down the line is a standalone movie in four or five years from now, whatever it is, if they want to go past the fact of just doing the bounty hunter with Boba Fett or, or Han Solo movie or an Obi-Wan movie, and they start exploring new things as they start to set up wild space and unknown regions it just opens up more and more possibilities to make more movies now you have not read the novel so far you're hearing about these particular things what do you think i read catalyst you did read Catalyst. I have a lot of synapses firing right You'd now. Live, you would be from Wild Space, by the way. I yeah. would be. <laughs> Williamsburg, Virginia is not quite Wild Space, but China it's close. I, we have Bush Gardens. Yeah. I think that this is something that comes out, and you get these every so often with, like, Who is Snoke or whatever, that is going to keep us up and keeping the bar open across the street at Yard House when it opens in a couple weeks because you can talk ad nauseum about who Snoke is, but that's Snoke being Snoke. And when you read stuff like this... It tends to think because Campia always complains, and I tend to agree with him, that Star Wars doesn't hasn't done a great job to this point of expanding the known universe when you greenlight movies that are Star Wars stories like Rogue One or Han Solo, but they're still in the place and time that we know. But what if the trilogy of movies that we're currently following does that for us? What if that expands the mythology and you don't have to keep mining into, oh no, this guy's definitely related to this other person we know because The Empire Strikes Back did that. What if... Snoke is totally different. This also opens another debate as to who Rey is and where she comes from. Right. Because when you're in the highest halls of Lucasfilm and you're debating where you want to go with this new trilogy and you're saying we need a threat that is not related necessarily to Palpatine or doesn't come from the Sith, it can be something entirely different Then what do we do with our hero and heroine character. Do we need them to be related too? Maybe this means that it's more likely that Ray is related to somebody we already know because they went out there into wild space with the villain. Right. I don't know that that increases or decreases the odds of Ray's lineage being a Kenobi or a Skywalker, but this has all sorts of implications in the known and unknown universe. I love seeing stuff like this. All right, so that's everything in the world of canon. Now, how about you guys? Let's hear what you're gonna say through Twitter. Every week, you hashtag Collider Jedi Council. You ask a bunch of questions. We go through them. We pick them out. Mark, what do we got? Ryan is first up, and he asks, over under 20% that Dryden Voss is the young Han Solo in the young Han Solo movies, either related to Quinlan Voss or is actually him. I'm going to go with Ken. I'm going to start with Ken on this one, too. First of all, Ken, give us a breakdown of who Quinlan Voss is for people who may not know. Yeah. And then this question in particular. Quinlan Voss, uh, of course, uh, originally technically appeared in The Phantom Menace on Tatooine yep. when Sebulba was being a big jerkball. And uh, the, he got built out in the EU. Lucas liked him enough and mentioned in Sith. I think we all know that. He is one of what I call our favorite rebellious Jedis. They don't really follow. Uh, they follow the, the ways of the Jedi, but they're a little bit on the rough edges. They'll take some chances, and we saw that a lot in the novel by Christy Golden, Dark Disciple, based great off... Great novel. A mm -hmm. great novel, based off of uh, some of the unused Rebels, uh, excuse me, Clone Wars scripts. Um, as him, you know, him, the name Dryden Voss, I'm looking that up uh, as we speak, and I, I don't think it is him. It could just be a case of what I call George R. R. Martinisms, uh, where it's like everyone's named Bran at some point. Uh, um, so I, I, I think it just could be a, a familiar name. I agree with you. It's the same reason I don't think Sabine Wren is the start of the Knights of Wren. Um, right. A lot of people think it that, has a W. Right. Uh, so it's a, it's a different thing. I think that they like the name and they're going to use it. And I think yeah. that there is the argument of you start off like, well, he wouldn't be hiding very much if that is him. Yeah. And then you're like, well, yeah. they weren't really hiding Luke Skywalker. Right. away from uh, Anakin Skywalker very hard on his home yeah. planet of Tatooine. So yeah. th there's that. But I I'm going to lean towards what Ken says. What do you think, Perry? I was thinking about going over because 20 is just a low number. Yeah, but I'm going to go under. I, I think I'm going to go under also because I know we've been seeing a lot of characters pop up or be mentioned in the movies that have appeared in books and shows and whatnot. But when you actually look at the ratio of characters they are adding to the feature films, mm -hmm. it is so incredibly low that it makes me think that this is not going to happen. What do you think, Mark? I think that Voss could be like the outer space Smith, you know? or Johnson, where it's just like such a common name. So I tend to say the 20% is a low number, though. 
So I would say I would say above 20 percent, but I'll put it at like 22, 23 percent. All right. What's next? Next up, we have Ryan who says, OK, now, Christian, we've heard a lot about these birds with Luke. Could these be the ghosts of Anakin, Yoda and Obi-Wan? I don't think they'll be the ghosts of Anakin, Obi-Wan and Yoda. But I do think that there's something to be said about these birds, these uh, wolves, if you will, these animals that they're going to start introducing in episode four. I think it's going to all tie together, excuse me, of, of season four of Rebels. I think it all ties together one way or another. I think that those birds are somebody or something, some kind of, uh, you know, maybe someone who's been looking out for Ahsoka and the rest of the Jedi, but I don't necessarily know if that means that it's Obi-Wan, excuse me, or uh, Anakin or or it, well, it can't be Anakin, obviously. It, it's it's is that what, it, it can, can be a bird. Yeah, he's asking if it's a Force ghost representation. But it like can't be Anakin in season Yoda. four because Anakin's still alive. Uh, Obi Wan's still alive. Well, no, he, I was, I was thinking of the Last Jedi. The yeah, Last Jedi. Luke's if they're gonna do it, yeah. um, I don't think they're gonna play on that at all. In you the see last that little one. thing sitting on there? Everybody's like, "Oh, is that Yoda? Is that a statue? Is it a? Yeah, is, it, so is it an I, owl?" I, don't, I think that they're gonna play the animal stuff. They're gonna play on that heavy in, in Rebels. Rebels. I don't think yeah. they're gonna touch it in uh, in the movies. What do you think, Mark? No, I, I think if you're gonna touch on animal stuff in the movie, it should surround Jedi kittens and where they come from and whether they've sure ever met. Were you were gonna say Jedi before. sharks? Jedi Shark would be pretty sweet, too. Um, I tend to think they're, they're going to stick with the classic Force ghost for... I just I I wouldn't mind it if like a bird was like the representative of Yoda or somebody like that, mm, but right. um, I really like seeing people standing there in robes with blue crap around them. <laughs> I prefer blue crap, Ken. Blue crap. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the convors, the, the, the birds we might specifically be mentioning, which is uh, plays heavily with, with Ahsoka and Ahsoka Tano, and uh, Sabine has one on her armor now. I, 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 I don't think that gets introduced in the movies. It's, it's, it's one of those things that, I hate to use that general public term, but yeah, it might be like, what, Luke's, a, Luke's talking to birds? Uh, I think you keep it with the blue crap. Uh, but uh, you never know. Yeah, if it gets introduced, I don't think it would be anything heavy. More so, you know, mm -hmm. maybe we'll see someone with, with a bird on armor yeah. or just some sort of quick mm -hmm. visual representation. But the fact that they, they directly are these characters, I don't think that yeah. is in the realm of They're possibility. They're going to be like the eagles in Lord of the Rings. Just, well, just it, fly it makes me think a little bit about uh, like, like Harry Potter and just the, the owls delivering right. messages and yeah. stuff like that. All right, what's next? Uh, next up, we have Kane. Who says, hmm. who would you cast for the role of Ray Sloan if she ever appeared on screen? I think what they could double up. And I, th but I say that you can get, give me the actress's name from Battlefront 2. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. No, absolutely not. <laughs> J Javina Gavankar? I think that's Janina they could, I think they could get yeah. her. I think it might be confusing to some people once Battlefront 2 comes out. And, um, but I think the same way that they could use Sam Witwer and stuff, and he's not just going to be Starkiller. I think that they could use her as Ray Sloan. I think that it's a character I would love to see in the movies. I think she's called to be in the movies. Um, I th and, I, and we know that she has a lot to do. Spoiler for The Empire's End, she's got a lot to do with the First Order. So mm -hmm. let's see. Let's see what happens there. What do you think, Perry? Just a couple of great actresses that come to mind is I'm a big fan of Zoe Kravitz all of a sudden. Not that yeah. I mm -hmm. ever thought that she wasn't a good actress, but mm -hmm. what I've seen from her as of late, particularly Big Little Lies, she is very, very talented. Yeah. And then another another option that I think could be a good pick is uh, Carmen Ajogo, who is in Alien Covenant. She I also saw her in It Comes at Night, and she is... Uh, yet another very talented option. So this character deserves to be seen on screen. I think it's important. And there's just a wealth of very talented actresses to choose from. That's right. The casting call is going to be tough, but I would throw Kiersey Clemens in the mix. She was in Dope. Uh, if you've never seen the Insecure show on HBO, Issa Rae is tremendous. I'd love to see her in that role or maybe somebody that's a little more well-known like a Rosario Dawson I think could also fit in there as well. Kenny, what do you got? I think if it's going to be as the story plays out, you know, Sloan has been around for a while, so she, she could be a little older, go go for an Oscar winner. Put Viola Davis in there in in nine or something like that if she reemerges. I could see that. All right, what's next? Uh, next up, we have Caleb Sullivan who says, "Can the Collider Jedi Council break down what we know about the Knights of Ren thus far? Do y'all have any fun theories?" Well, we really don't know much about them yet. We know certain little things here and there, um, and we have ideas and thoughts, and nothing necessarily confirmed. Uh, but I think we're going to learn a lot about them in Episode Eight. I think mm -hmm. Episode Eight is really when they're going to start to kind of push them towards the forefront. It looks like. The start of them is happens in um, in battle and battlefront aftermath. 
that's look, that looks like where the start happens. Uh, there are things that happen with uh, with artifacts and things that they're trying to do, and how much Snoke has an in, in involvement, we don't know. But there hasn't been a lot that we've really learned. We know that the leader of the Knights of Ren is Kylo Ren. Um, but how they ultimately formed, if they were this long-standing religion, we don't know that yet. We have no idea. So I would like to learn the history about them, and I hope we hear more about them. What do you think, Mark? There's three really unanswered questions that everybody's just frothing in the mouth to see what The Last Jedi reveals to us. And those pieces of information are, who are the Knights of Ren, who is Rey, and who is Snow? Right. If this movie is going to answer one of those questions... I think it's going to be who are the Knights of Ren. I tend to think that's going to be tied in to Rey and her training, is that Luke is giving her background on why he is such a grumpy Jedi and doesn't want to train her because this thing happened with the Knights of Ren. But let's not get too excited just yet about the fact that we saw that image, that flashback from the opposite side in the last Jedi teaser because we also saw some cool Knights of Ren stuff mm -hmm. in the force awakens and in the force awakens promo material and it never ended up being explained all that much i tend to think that it's going to happen in the last jedi sure, hope I, think, so. I think you're going to get a lot of backstory and the one question that you would not get answered in the last jedi then would be who is snoke they probably save that for episode nine but as far as who, who the knights of ren are it seems like something that luke skywalker had helped put together helped organize and it all went terribly south when ben turned to the dark side and became kylo ren perry what do you think I really hope we get answers in the next movie because that's something that I am dying to learn more about. And for some reason, I don't really have like a reason why this medium would be best. So I kind of want a book about them. Oh, Perry. I, yeah, oh, I, I knew I was going to get that reaction. Oh, boy. Well, it, it'll be exciting. It'll be a mystery to you forever. I'm going to have, no, I'm going <laughs> to spend a lot of time with Christian in his Jeep, and we're just going to listen to the book isn't, on tape. Isn't that what J.J. Abrams said at one point? Didn't he say he wanted to see a book on the Knights of Ren? Mm -hmm. I thought he said that yeah. at one point, right? That would be interesting. I don't Can't really know why, but something just seems right for, for something like that. But also, I think we're, if they if they introduce Knights of Ren in the movie, I imagine they're not going to go that route because, I mean, the worldwide fans of the films are already asking that question, just like the same question with Snoke and Rey. So I feel like they're going to keep that in the films. But if we get a book, cool. Also, some of the theories about the toy list we were discussing earlier predicted that maybe some of those, uh, the code name toys could have been Knights of Ren. Mm. Uh, I, I think they've they've come out of the acolytes of the beyond, which you're talking about the aftermath started by Yuptashi, one a former uh, imperial dignitary. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the the what you have in there is basically the rough draft of the the, the, the humble beginnings of the Knights of Ren, where those masks. These are not force users or force sensitive people so right. much, but you put on these masks, these Sith relics, and you kind of uh, become part of that power. We saw with a character, I believe uh, Kiz is her name, who goes kind of like I don't know if I want to be a part of this. Puts on the mask, kills her friends. She's kind of uh, on our way up the ranks there, the Acolytes of, of the Beyond, they worship Darth Vader. I think uh, if you have a group, a biker gang, if you will, who uh, believes in the Force but doesn't really use the Force, doesn't know how to use the Force, and someone comes along and is like, hey, my name's Ben Solo, I'll switch sides, I know the Force, you're our leader, we're going to follow you. I think something comes out of that. That's much better than my Cody, can you edit my answer out, and then <laughs> I'm going to say what Ken just said to the camera? Yeah. Tell me when you're ready. Go. Uh, what, what he said. All right. Uh, last one. Last one is going to be Ben Knight, not Ben Solo. Is it still possible for Luke to have a child? And what do you think the odds are that Mara Jade would be the mother? Odds of Mara Jade being the mother at this point are around 4%. Uh, 4%. <laughs> and the and odds falling. of him having a child in general, I'm going to say 35%. I still, uh, Mark and I famously at this point have had an argument about this. Oh, um, uh, I think that. <laughs> It is absolutely possible that he could still have a child because I think because the the whole argument of like well the Jedi are not supposed to have kids and this and that it, that was that was established in the prequels and I also think that there is Obi Wan broke those rules a little bit in the Clone Wars series and, oh, and I think he? I think it was one of these things to where they when when that happened everybody from the story group went you're Dan cuffing us here I don't think that this priest thing is going to last throughout the whole thing and I also think that it's one of the things that Luke would probably be like you know what it's okay to mix passion a little bit and be he, he's always been about blending the dark side and the light side together so go ahead and have a fun relationship and a few kids Luke I'm okay with it <laughs> Hey, babe, you want to go to the dark side with me tonight? That's right. Um, I don't think that Luke has born children. I never said that it's definite that he doesn't have kids. I just think it's a very slim possibility because the one shred of light that I will give to that theory is that, like, look, if Luke wants to start a new Jedi Order, he could just be standing over Han and Leia in the bedroom being like, come on, guys, let's get, 
let's, let's crank some kids out. Because I know that, you, uh, that, that one of you is force sensitive. Get going. But Luke also knows that he's force sensitive. And so maybe just in the name of trying to produce more offspring to train as Jedi, to build the Jedi Order back up, he might have to start knocking boots as much as his religion says, I'm not supposed to do it. Hey, my hands are tied. Let's go behind the barn. I don't think he's had kids. I don't think he's going to have kids, but there certainly is a possibility it's that big. Perry, will he have kids? No. I, I lean towards no, and I don't want him. I don't want it to you know come to light that he has a kid or that he will have kids at that age. I don't know. But... Mainly because he's had such a troubled time and such a challenging time with the mm -hmm. Force. I would think that his mentality, especially given his situation in Last Jedi, would be, oh, it's probably not a good idea for me to have kids and, and spread these powers elsewhere. So it makes more sense to me, and I think it would be the more interesting storyline if he never has kids and he comes to terms with the fact that, oh, like, you know, like the Force hasn't really worked out the way I wanted for me, and look at all these things I missed out. That, that would kind of be an interesting battle to see him have. Kenneth. Uh, yeah, if, if, if it's not Ray, I don't think he has a child. But also, let's not forget, you know, uh, uh, they don't, don't necessarily say you can't knock boots. It's just attachment is forbid, as Anakin said to Padme, which I believe is him saying, don't worry, we're not going to have breakfast in the morning, kid. <laughs> I think I think it's, uh, you know, it could happen. It could happen. Luke, uh, Luke Obi-Wan, I believe, got a little lonely. Uh, he didn't and, use force protection. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on. I don't have a condom, but hang on. All right, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Just got a lot of blue crap around me. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that's the show for today. I'd like to thank everybody oh, oh, on wow. the council. Miss Gramoff Nemiroff herself. <laughs> Perry Nemiroff, how do you follow that? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I am on Twitter and Instagram, at P. Nemiroff. And, of course, watch Collider Behind the Scenes this Saturday because I get to play beer pong with these two guys right here. And someone else is jealous. I loved it so much. All right, right <laughs> next to her is Kylo Ken, Ken Napsok. Uh, good to be here. You can follow me at Ken Napsok for all my wonderful adventures. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm sorry this one's kind of not safe for work today. I hope you all young kids learn something out there. Martle Tuttle Deedle Tootle. Ah, your poopy face boss will get over the blue thing reference at the end. You guys can find me on Twitter at Mark. Mark Ellis Live, upcoming stand updates, markellislive.com, including San Antonio, June 9th through the 11th. Go Spurs, go. And we've got a really big showdown match going on tomorrow between Jeremy Johns and Robert Meyer Burnett, the former Inner Geekdom champion, going for the number one contender spot to face Hector Navarro at the Collider Collision in July. Follow me at Christian Harloff on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the whole deal. And we'll see you next time. May the force be with you, always. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.